Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. It's so great to see a house full of praise and of smiling faces. It is a great day to worship our God. It is the end of Vacation Bible School, and the Spirit of the Lord has been in this place, and we're going to get to hear from our children singing today. We are also worshiping community with many people around the country who are worshiping with us on Facebook Live, and we've got cameras all over the place. Let's take a moment to wave at our church family who are worshiping from home or the beach or Colorado or all, all kind of different places. I just want to remind everyone one that we are still putting uh, a plate for giving over at the door and for those of you who are online you can both give on the church web page and you can get a bulletin in order of worship so you can sing along and you can pray along and you can participate instead of being an observer you want to be a worshiper and God hears your praise and so uh, I just want to begin to sing the praises of our God today my heart is so full for the way the Spirit of God has moved in the lives of so many young people, uh, and not just young people, through this Vacation Bible School. It's all because of Jesus, who has shown us the measure of his love in the cross. And so let us sing, as the people of the cross, lift high the cross. is there's the one true church apostolic and universal whose holy faith let us now declare I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And you may be seated. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm so glad that you all decided to join us this morning to worship our Heavenly Father. And thank you for choosing FUMC Mariana. And I want to welcome all the new, if we have any visitors or guests or anything, welcome to our church. Hopefully you feel the love from our ushers and love from Nathan and the, the, the choir. Um, hopefully you're just having a good time worshiping our God this morning. And I will make it just a quick announcement too. After church for all you visitors, if you want, you can get involved in a Sunday school. We have amazing Sunday school teachers and leaders. So um, ask any of us up here and we'll get you set for the Sunday school. And it's right after service and we're kind of spread it all around the church. So reach out to us and we'll get you set up for a Sunday school. We had a great, like Nathan said, a great VBS this last week. Um, thank you so much. Yes, yeah. thank you, Kenneth. If you haven't seen his pictures, he did some amazing job with the pictures, so go and look on that. We had about 80 uh, kids registered, and we averaged around 65 each day. Um, and so we just want to say thank you for all your love and support and all the giving that you get. And we also had about 20 youth volunteers and over 20 adult volunteers as well. So I am, I'm proud to say that it was a great week. And uh, just thank you. Thank you for all the love, support, all the prayers. Uh, we really appreciate it. Also, um, Wednesday Night Live it is returning on August 11th and that Sunday before, so August 8th. So mark on your calendars, August 8th is a big Sunday. Big Sunday, we're going to have Blessing of the Backpacks. So kids, any kids in here and kids watching online, bring your backpacks on August 8th. We're going to bless those because school starts the 10th. I know it. I'm so sorry. Ooh. Two days after school is starting. <laughs> so bring your backpacks. We're going to bless that. And also, it's going to be Promotion Sunday. So all the kids are going to move up. I'm going to have some kids coming to youth. Kids are going to different classes. And then also we're going to be praying for your teachers. Yes, teachers, school starts on the 10th. Oh my. Just like the kids. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's getting close. So it's a big Sunday. We're going to bless the backpacks, pray for the teachers, and we're going to uh, promote some kids. So it's a big Sunday. Big Sunday. So mark that on your calendars. And also uh, Nathan's Bible study this Wednesday. It's going to resume back in the Wesley, in the Wesley Center at 7 a.m. It's a great study. There's breakfast, good, some, some good food. So y'all want to come to that, Nathan's Bible study. And also, last announcement, Carrie has reached out to me, and she is so grateful for everyone giving food for the pantry out here and just donating. And so she's won, she wanted to know if you have any extra food or if you have any more to donate. You can see her, or you can bring them by the church office, and we'll get that set up. That is such a good ministry. We see many people come out in need of that food, and so we just thank you all for that. She thanks you all, and uh, if you have, want to talk to her or talk to us, please reach out. Thank you, guys.
That was beautiful. Thank you, choir. Um, as we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, I just wanted to say how wonderful it is to see some of our beloved members that we haven't had with us for a little, little while because of health. Richard Lawrence and Tony Clappas, it's so wonderful to have you both back in. Welcome home. Welcome home. And some of our other very special friends that we have been missing, I'm so happy to see your faces this morning. Um, let us also remember those who could use a special touch from God this morning. Becky Wester and Irv Lowe. With these prayer concerns and others, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, thank you for the freedom to gather together to worship and to praise you. This morning we praise you for family. You tell us that it's not good for us to be alone and you have placed people around us that impact our lives and move us away from loneliness. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, dear God, help each of us to remember who you say we are as a family of God. Loved, saved, created with a purpose and forgiven. We are forgiven over and over again when we confess to you in Jesus' name. Help us to share the same compassion to others. Bless us to be patient and wise, to seek you first, and to speak kindness. Convict us when we're wrong, dear Lord, and strengthen our resolve to apologize. With your guidance, anything and anyone can be restored. You are our healer. In you, we find peace. God, you, you are there in the pain we cannot bear, in the moments of unspeakable joy, and in the quiet steadiness of day-to-day -day life. Help us to be a blessing that shines bright in your name. We ask these things in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, this has been a fantastic week. As Blake said, we had 80 registered students to be with us for Vacation Bible School. We averaged 65 kids a day. We had over 20 youth helpers. We couldn't have done it without our 20 youth helpers. We had uh, over 20 adult volunteers. It, that's a lot. That is a lot. And, uh, and the numbers cannot tell the story of uh, hearts and lives that were changed. I had a little boy come up to me. He'd never had a Bible before. And he said, thank you for giving me a Bible. You know, so we had so many moments like that where we could just see the love of God being poured out through the life of our church. And if it weren't an all-hands-on-deck, church-wide effort, it wouldn't have happened. Uh, but all of our work was led by Marissa Mays. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Miss Marissa. It's unbelievable to me that this is the first time she ever had a solo organization of a vacation Bible school. And wow, did she do a great job. Every little tiny detail was taken care of, and uh, we were well prepared for uh, any exigencies that came up. And also, I've been on vacation, you may be aware. I missed two Sundays for vacation, and, uh, and, and Shauna and I were talking as we were driving back. It took 25 hours to drive back from Rhode Island. And I was like, I am not nervous about this at all. I'm just going to show up and find out what I'm supposed to do. She said, we got it all covered. Just, you can just be a pastor. I said, praise the Lord for sending Marissa Mays to First United Methodist Church. Uh, but I want Marissa to share a word about Vacation Bible School. And then we're going to have the kids come up so you can hear some of the songs that they sang at Vacation Bible School. We've got some of our kids here today. Marissa? 
Good morning. If anyone knows me, they know I really don't like to be up here in the spotlight. So I'm sorry that they're throwing me up here. But Vacation Bible School was so much fun. I'm so thankful for all of you who prayed for us or donated or took the time to come out for the week. It really was a life-changing week. Not only did we have our church family there, but we reached out to so many kids of the community, which is exactly what I wanted to do. So that was just so fun to get to meet new faces, and now I get to see them over town. I love that when little kids run up to me in Walmart and everything. So I'm looking forward to that, and I just really appreciate all the support everybody gave to make the week so great. And I'm really glad that Nathan just kind of let me do my thing and trusted me my first year into VBS. That really helped. Um, now we're going to do two VBS songs. So I wanted to invite any of the children up or helpers or adult volunteers. Colton, that you can come up here. And they're going to do some of the songs that we learned at BBS at Mystery Island.
you so much. I'm going to pass the mic off to Miss Janie. Oh, children, come back. Don't leave me by myself down here. I might have to keep Pastor Nathan down here. I'd rather have y'all down here. Church family, I have to say amen to what Brother Nathan said. You do not know the work that that lady did right there. I know that's her job, but it was her heart also, boy. And, and it was wonderful. It was wonderful. And so, hey, she even had Miss Cherry and uh, Miss Karen up here dancing, so you know it had to be pretty good, didn't it? We had a wonderful time in Bible school, didn't we? I want to show you something I brought with me. Yes, we did. We sure did. I, every afternoon going home, I would see Mr. Ken sitting out on the porch taking a nap. He was tired. I want to show you what I brought to me this morning. Can you help me hold that, please? Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That is a quilt that my friend, Miss Karen, made. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, well, I guess we could turn it up this way. It's an Atlanta Braves. Y'all like to watch the Atlanta Braves play baseball? I do. You know why? I have a little boy that is the catcher on that team that I taught in second grade, Jeff Mathis. Yeah, so I had to pull for the Braves. But I want you to know, she took all these little bitty pieces, look at there, look how close, and put them together and made a beautiful blank quilt, excuse me, a quilt out of them. Lot of hard work. She's a master quilt maker, isn't she? And you know what? When I saw that, I said, I want to make a quilt. If she can do it, I can do it. So I went to the store, and I bought me some little squares. And I want you to help me make a quilt today. Can you do that? Okay. So when I count to three, I want you to yell, bang. Can you do that? And I'm going to throw these pieces up, and when they come back down, I'm going to have a quilt. You ready? One, two, three, bang. Well, that didn't work, did it? How many of you thought that would work? Or did you think that was the dumbest idea you've ever heard? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that didn't work at all, did it? Because it takes some time to do it. One day, maybe she'll teach me how to do it. And I got to thinking, you know what? We are not created by accident. God planned us. He planned us for a purpose. Everything that he created, he planned for us. And in the Bible, it tells us that I have a plan for you. And I know what that plan is. And God has a plan and a purpose for us. And he takes all the bits and pieces of our lives, and he puts them together and creates wonderful things. Now, just like Miss Karen put all the bits and pieces together to make that quilt, God puts those bits and pieces together us. If we will let Jesus into our hearts and invite him into our hearts, he has a plan for us, and it is a wonderful plan, and he can do wonderful things because we have him in our hearts. So, when you see a quilt or you see pieces, you think about God taking your life and making something wonderful. And that's the good news today. Let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Dear God, we just thank you for being the master quilt maker. We thank you that you have created us and that we are going to let you live in our lives and that you're going to take the bits and pieces and make something beautiful and useful. And all God's children said, Amen. And you may go to Children's Church. As children go to Children's Church, I invite us all to stand as we sing together our hymn of preparation. It's Christ for the World We Sing, and the words are in your bulletin.
may be seated, and I invite you to uh, take your Bibles out. I hope you brought a Bible. If you didn't uh, bring a Bible, there is one provided for you in the pew in front of you, so grab a Bible and uh, look up the book of Ephesians. I'm really grateful to Blake last week for starting us up on a series on Ephesians. How did he do? Yes, fantastic. We're going to be in Ephesians talking about the gift that God has given us in Jesus Christ as it's described in the book of Ephesians. We'll be doing this for the next uh, quite a few weeks. I really am grateful to Emily and Blake uh, for their great leadership. I was able to tune in a little bit here and there online and and uh, it's just great to know that everything went off without a hitch and, with, and there was no let up or people who didn't show up or all that type of thing. I always, I always try to keep it a a uh, uh, secret when I go on vacation, because there's some people that just don't come. Well, the preacher ain't going to be there. Nobody will know if I don't show. Um, but, uh, but we've got a team where everything can go just totally smoothly without me, and I'm really grateful. So uh, Ephesians, which Blake told you about last week, is a fresh look at what God has given to us in the great gift of his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, normally, when we think about what God did for us in Jesus Christ, we have a pretty simplistic view of salvation. Uh, The idea that God sent Jesus uh, to die for our individual sins so that we could have a personal relationship with God and go to heaven when we die. And uh, all those things are wonderful things that we teach our children. Um, But when you read the writings of Paul, when you read even the Gospels, you realize that God had a lot in mind that he wanted to accomplish uh, by taking flesh and dying for our redemption. And that uh, there are all kinds of ways of understanding the, the, the brokenness of our world, the brokenness of humanity. And God had a cosmic plan uh, to restore all things through his son, Jesus Christ. Ephesians is a broad and deep understanding of why Christ came Blake shared with you from Ephesians chapter 1, which you don't necessarily find when you uh, read it in your Bible that we have today, is that in the original language, uh, almost all of the first chapter of Ephesians is one run-on sentence. You know what a run-on sentence is? It's when it just rambles and rambles and rambles, and there's no period. It just goes on and on and on. The, the whole first chapter of Ephesians is one sentence in the original language. One sentence that is a blessing. It's a blessing. Uh, it's a blessing upon the readers, the hearers. It's a blessing that is based in the blessing that God has given us in Jesus Christ. And... Uh, Uh, the, The writer of Ephesians is telling us that in Christ, God has given us every blessing. When, uh, When we were given Jesus, we were given everything that God has to offer us. And the rest of the book is going to unpack that one big blessing to teach us how our lives have been blessed so we can live into this blessing as individuals and also as a broken world that needs healing. It says in Ephesians chapter 1, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing. How many spiritual blessings? Every spiritual blessing. So each week we're going to be talking about what God has given us in Jesus Christ, the many and manifold different ways that he has gifted us. Um, it's, a, it's, an, it's an idea of how God has not only healed individual hearts in Jesus Christ, but in this broken world he has, he has shown us his plan to restore all things, a cosmic healing of a broken universe, and also how not only we can be saved for heaven, but how we can be restored in this life. He has a plan to gather all things in him, in Jesus Christ, things in heaven and things in earth, that all things can be unified again, and to make us holy and blameless before him in love. God has loved us completely, but we oftentimes 
forget how to love well. And everything that is broken in our world is broken because we are unable to receive the fullness of God's love or to offer the fullness of God's love as he designed us to. We're going to be talking about all these things in the weeks to come. God had a plan, a great plan, a plan from the beginning, from the foundation of the universe. Um, Ephesians calls it a mystery. A mystery is not something that, that is a secret necessarily, but it's a thing that wasn't revealed yet. Mystery, God's hidden plan that has been revealed, not as, a, as an idea. When we think about God's plan, we would think like, like uh, the Methodists have a plan, where the, you know, the bishops put something on the website, and it's this step, that step, the other. You know what I'm talking about? But God's plan was not like that. God's plan was a person, the person of Jesus Christ. God's plan was to become one of us in order to heal us, save us, restore us from the inside. So uh, our, we begin today uh, from Ephesians chapter 2, uh, and we'll read today from the 11th verse through the 22nd verse. And this is, a, this is a big part of the blessing that God has given to the world through Jesus Christ. Listen for God's word as we share it together. So then, remember that at one time, you Gentiles by birth, called uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, isn't it amazing how we have names for other people? Labels, categories, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ being Aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers to the covenants of Israel, uh, of promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace in his flesh he has made both groups into one. And he has broken down the dividing wall. That is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself a new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death the hostility through it. So he came and he proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone in him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also, that's us collectively, you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Today we deal with a, an essential question. What's wrong with the world? What's wrong with the world? Uh, I, could, I could sort of pull you aside and interview you one by one, and we'd get a lot of answers about what's wrong with the world. Most of us would have an answer about what's wrong with the world that didn't say, what's wrong with the world is me. You know, most of the time, if I were to interview you one by one, you would say, it's those people over there 
who are what's wrong with the world, right? Um, but um, we also know, each of us, that there's something wrong with me, too. We work really, really hard to tamp it down, to cover it up, uh, to put a good veneer so nobody can see it. But we're all wrestling with what's wrong with me, too. Um, and how to fix it. We know there's something wrong, and we don't all agree with what's wrong. We certainly don't all agree with what it's going to take to make it well. So there's a few words that Paul, who we think wrote Ephesians, Paul used to describe what's wrong with the world. He says, uh, he uses the word alienation. You know what alienation means? It means being all alone. Uh, sometimes you can be in a packed room and feel totally, totally by yourself. Have you ever had that experience? Alienation is, uh, is, is a kind of loneliness that's, that's more than a transitory loneliness. It's uh, being separated from others, disconnected. He uses the word hostility. Ever experienced hostility? Uh, have you ever offered? Hostility? Is there hostility in the world? Sometimes that hostility is in groups, it's in culture, it can be in politics, it can be within the church, not this church. But have you ever been in a church where there was hostility in the church? Whoo, that's no fun. Hostility. There can be hostility in the house. All right? Hostility. He talks about a dividing wall. I once saw the dividing wall that he's referring to in Ephesians. It used to be that in the temple, there was a place where you could go if you were not Jewish, and yet you believed in the Hebrew God. You could go this far, and there was a door. This is called the court of the Gentiles, and then there's the court of the Jews, where you can go in here. If you are not Jewish, you cannot go past this point. There was a, even engraved on the wall by the door, any Gentile who crosses this point will be responsible for their own life. And uh, archaeologists found this carving, and it was in a museum display that came through Atlanta one time, and I went to see it. I was like, wow, there's that wall that physically came down. There's all kinds of dividing walls. There's all kinds of walls that separate people in all kinds of ways. Paul talks about those who are far off and those who are near. Some people are far off. Some people are near. And he talks about people who are strangers and aliens. It's a description of the problem of the world where we're essentially separated from each other. When God made us to be united with him and to be united with one another. To be one people. Uh, where the heart of his calling for all of us is that we would love God and we would love neighbor. And yet, since the very beginning, Adam and Eve went and hid themselves from God. They separated themselves from God. And their very first children were divided from one another. The very first brother killed his brother out of jealousy. The very first community was a place where they built a tower and their languages were divided. And we have been able unable to hear and understand and speak clearly to one another ever since. People have been divided and alienated and separated. The name of our nation is the United States of America. It's a goal, <laughs> right? Sometimes we say, maybe we've never been so divided, but in some ways, there, we have always had divisions within us, haven't we? It's part of who we are. Our denomination is called the United Methodist Church. It's a goal, <laughs> right? We have labels, progressives and centrists and traditionalists, caucuses and groups. 
we celebrate that we have, as Scripture says, one Lord, one church, one baptism, and yet we have hundreds of denominations. And even in every family, there are things that have happened. A fight over a will. The thing that got said at Thanksgiving. And a cruel of slights and frustrations where brick by brick we have built up walls between ourselves and the ones that we love. And we, we many times want to just let it go. Start over. But we can't let it go. You know why? Because that wall protects us from the pain that we experienced before it was there. And so we live in this tension of do I take down the wall and make myself vulnerable so that I could be hurt again, or do I keep up the wall and yet have to live in this isolation of being separated? That's a human experience. Humans are the most social creatures that there are. Um, we're at the top of the food chain because we work together. You know, if it was just about one-on-one, -on -one, the tiger would be eating us, you know? But you can go to the zoo and the tiger's looking at you like this. I, mean, I can't get to you. I'd like to be eating you. Instead, you paid $7 to look at me. <laughs> Right? Why are we looking at the tiger in the zoo instead of being the tiger's lunch? Because we know how to work together. And yet, human beings are capable of being the most violent towards their own than any of God's creatures. No other creatures know how to make war. No other creatures have the tools that we have to kill one another or to label one another, or to go tribe against tribe. We know that we need each other, and yet we know that we have to have walls. And this is the presenting problem in the book of Ephesians, in this part, in chapter 2. The presenting issue in Ephesians is the division between Gentiles and Jews, but the description of the hostility the description of living with a wall between, the description of being far off and near is something that we relate to in every sphere of human existence. The love that I need is on the other side of that wall. The love that I need is on the other side of a wall that I feel like I need to keep me safe. Am I making any sense to anybody? Yeah. So what is God's solution? God's solution is Jesus Christ. And that may sound simplistic, but this is what Paul teaches us, that Jesus Christ is the representative human being, just as Adam had been the representative human being who describes in his living the brokenness of all of us. Jesus was the representative human being of all the human race. And so uh, all of us are, are in Christ. Jesus comes for all people, and he is God made flesh for all of humanity. So within himself, he represents all of our divisions, our groups, our varied religions, uh, all sinners are represented in Jesus Christ. And uh, which of us are sinners? Oh, those people more than us. No. All people. And he stands with all sinners, all groups all divisions, all people who have done all these things that have built these walls, all these people who were designed to be one, all these people who have experienced whatever it is that happened, 
that separated us, scattered us, dissected us. And for which of them does he die? All of them. That's you and me and the people we hate and the people we avoid. <laughs> I had a professor one time, he said, he said um, uh, after I got out of college, I got married, went to seminary, I was a pastor, I was still pretty young, but, but I was at the grocery store one day, I'm pushing the grocery cart down the aisle, and I look up, and I see my ex-girlfriend from college. He said, I just let go of the, go of the buggy and turn around and walked out of the grocery store. <laughs> I just see this, this cart full of food just floating down. I'm like, what in the world has happened here? And we've all got those people. And we would just let go of the buggy and turn around and walk out. And, and uh, Jesus Christ died for them all. And this book says that when he died, he tore down the wall. When he died, the hostility died with him. When he died, the divisions died in his very body. And Paul's going to say elsewhere, we resurrect those things. Don't we? Don't we? We, re we resurrect them. We pull them back up, but, but, but we can't bring them back to life. They feel so real. And they have real effects. But the division between you and God, and the division between you and everybody else, is artificial. Any of you all ever see the movie Weekend at Bernie's? Years ago, there was a movie called Weekend at Bernie's, and these t two guys went to one of the boss's house, and I can't remember what they needed out of this guy. But anyway, they show up, and he had died. And they had to, re they had to pretend like he was alive. They would, strap, they would strap themselves to, <laughs> to his dead body, and Bernie would just be like floating along like this, right? Did you see it? It was, it was very funny. It was very funny. But when we participate in the alienation and the hostility of this world, it's like weekend at Bernie's. We're resurrecting something that God has sent his son to destroy in his flesh. And it's tem temporary. It's temporary. He says, he has made us something else. Members of the household of God. Um, many times uh, people misunderstand the idea of church membership and they think it's like signing up to be on a roll. It's like being a member of the Rotary Club or whatever the case may be. It is not. Membership is, a, is about covenant. It's a theological statement. It's a faith statement. It's saying we belong together, just like uh, if you were to cut your body up, it would be dismembering and put it back together. That would be remembering. We are members of each other. We are members of the body of Christ. Christ died in his body for us and he has reformed a new people where we collectively are the body of Christ. We're the body of Christ. We belong to one another. And this is his plan, to take people who are divided from one another and unite them in himself so that whatever is good for any is good for all. Whatever hurts any of the others, hurts all the others. I've said this to y'all before, but when I put ice cream in my mouth, what part of my body is happy? All of it. And when I hit my thumb with a hammer, what part of my body hurts? All of it. It's not like my toe is all mad because there's ice cream in my mouth. Well, I want some ice cream. No, all of my body is happy when there's ice cream in it. All right, and it's not like when I hit my thumb, you know, that my, that my ear is like, it's about time he got his. We belong to one another. We are members of one another. 
this is what God has done. This is what the cross means. Jesus died for you to show you he is not aloof. God is not standing up in heaven with his arms crossed, just waiting for you to mess up so he can bop you on the head. No. The division, the alienation, the hostility that we have created between ourselves and God is something that he loves us so much that he would become one of us to die to heal that division. He doesn't want any of us to be alone. And he has the power to reunite a divided humanity, beginning in the most humble way, with a little community like this one. I looked out many times at Vacation Bible School. At Vacation Bible School, we had beach balls. And... Um, I don't know how much the beach balls cost. Probably all of these uh, 20 beach balls or so, you know, cost $10 or something. Who knows? Not much. We spent a lot on vacation Bible school, but there was no greater value than those beach balls. You see 100 people in a room sometimes, you know? Isn't that right? 80 or so, 65 children, 20 something teenagers, 20 something volunteers. Uh, from the age of like two to the age of like 82, all beating these beach balls, running around. Different races, all different ages, from all different economic groups or educational backgrounds. Um, some children with special needs carrying with them when they come into that room all kind of identities that the world has put upon them. But in that moment, with those beach balls, they were all just little children of one father. One. One. All giggling and laughing and playing and rejoicing to be the family of God. Friends, if you feel alone, there's been a high price paid for your life and your heart to be united with a God who is not standing aloof from you. And friends, that high price has been paid so we can go as the body of Christ and be agents of reconciliation to teach the world that his love is universal for all of us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn is a hymn we usually sing with communion, but I want you to think about it. Sing it from your heart, and let us stand and sing together, one bread, one body.
receive now this benediction. Live today in Christ's presence, remembering that he is near, and he will sustain you as you serve in his name. Amen.